Hello guys and welcome back and welcome back to a video I didn't think I would be making. Um, as you know, I don't even know how far the videos have been released at this point. Um, the A6 went to its new home and I unexpectedly got the TT. I always said the TT would be a bit of fun. Uh, I didn't actively want to get rid of it or anything, but one of my friends uh, was in need of a car and he offered a decent price, so I let him have it. On the grounds that I had something else to use, because I must admit the TT had a much bigger boot than I thought, and I could fit the kids in, but I really couldn't fit ever the dogs in or anything like that. And I apologise about the wind as well, guys. Uh, I can't do nothing about it. This is a last minute video, um, so I haven't had the chance to bring the mics. I'm going to try and shield it around here. So, the, the TT's gone to a new home, but it's actually a subscriber, and they are really happy with it. And I must say, I miss that car, it is great. But, it's a day-to-day -day runabout for me dogs. It really wasn't practical. Um, so what have I got on board? Of course it's in the state, because that's what I like, <laughs> as we all know. Twin turbo, diesel, Swedish, not a Volvo. So that means it's a Saab, doesn't it? So, as we all know, I did love, I'll tell you what it is, it's a 9.3. I did love me other 9.3, the, the 2.8 V6 turbo aero but I did not like the 700 and, well, more than £30 tax now. Couldn't stomach it. So the only reason I sold that car, I could not justify paying more tax for that car than about two or three or even four other cars to tax for a whole year. Can't do that. So I went for the diesel. So, without you, let's see what it is. It's a Tsar 93 Aero TTDI Twin Turbo. And we all know these pipes shine up rather nice. Like I said, a bit of the reds come off it. Just had a little bit of a hard life here and there. But uh, I think it looks bang on. I love the back end of these. I must say, the favourite back end of any Saab for me, these this era, the facelifted 9.3 estate. Basically, just a Vauxhall Vectra underneath. Uh, we all know I'm not a great fan of the Insignia. Thankfully, this doesn't have much at all in the way of sharing with the Insignia. It's mainly the Vectra, which is a cracking car. Underneath, it's it, they're bang on. There's not a great deal goes wrong with them. So like I say, it's the aero. So it means you get all the extra nice little bits. I reckon these will tidy up lovely with my polisher. Headlamp ushers, xenon headlamps. I love the colour, like a minty sort of green. I don't know if any of you guys are Saab experts can tell us what it is. Tone cover thing missing on it, unfortunately. No doubt that'll be colour coded, so it'll be a right pain to get a hold of one. And I love how far recessed these these are in my other one wasn't like that. Uh, looks really aggressive at the bottom there. Looks bang on a little bit from the side, which hasn't got the missing cap. Uh, but yeah, quite a mean looking car, I must say. It seems to be different. This is, must be a facelift compared to my other one that I had, because I didn't. It's got like some kind of like LED. Lights in there, I, d I don't know what they do. Uh, I don't know if they come on with the side lights. In fact, I don't know, is this running lights? I don't know, I'm gonna go and switch the side lights on now. I've only just bought this car and drove it home, so let's find out. Let's put the side lights on. Uh, yeah, are they on or are they off? I don't know. Oh yeah, they're on. So these must be running lights when the engine's running. I don't know, I'm gonna, actually, I'll, I'll start it up and we'll find out. Let's find out. It's a bit minging inside. But I can deal with a car needing a wash. It's no big deal. I don't actually know what they are. They must just be like side lights or something. Running lights, maybe? I don't know. Uh, but anyways, they're LED, some kind of side light on there. And I, I, I don't know. I, I don't know. I must say, I don't know. Let's put some lights on and just find out when the engine's actually running. No idea. But anyways, they've got the Xenon lights in them. Headlamp washer moment. I'm going to start doing some work on it so I don't want the front of the car all uh, up the eye. So, anyways, as you can hear, it's really quiet for a diesel. Genuinely, really quiet. Ah, there we go. There's some of them LEDs on the side, you see, in there. And obviously, it's got the full, it's hard to see in the dark, uh, but the, the LED uh, in the dark, what am I on about? In the sunlight, you just about can see it glowing. I mean, it shows up really funny on the camera, doesn't it? Like that. It doesn't actually look like that in real life. There you go. It's got the full LED backlights on it as well. Twin pipes, like I've already said. Nice little spoiler on the top. Happy days, I like all that. So, 
what do you guys think of it i'm not going to go i'm going around here as i know i don't know nothing about it i haven't got a clue uh, there's a few issues with it which i'm aware of it needs a bit of a clean inside granted but no rips or tears of any damage to the seats or anything like that uh just needs a bit of a hoover actually not in bad condition all the headlining is all right the seats are all right yeah it's not bad let's have a look in here yeah, just needs it just needs a hoover out to be fair. I viewed this car in the pouring rain last night in the dark and bought a blind. Something you should never do. Uh, see it's got the aero on. Just needs just a bit of a a bit of a clean down, and that's about it. Doesn't require much more. I think it's gonna need a tire on the front. I'm gonna do the bare minimum. It's due it's it's, it's due MOT now or expired one of the two. Um I think it might need a new tire on here, definitely. It's a couple of heat shields rattling at the back. Um a few other bits and bobs which I'm going to get to I'll show you uh, so I'm just going to turn it off I've just had to put £20 of uh, V power in just turn the lights off and turn the engine off well we're in here we'll pull the bonnet we'll have a look under the bonnet so it's not one of my favourite engines but it's a Fiat 1.9 yes Fiat I did say that correctly um, and it's the twin turbo hence you've got your big turbo and your little turbo down there uh, this is a weird engine, it's a bit of a hybrid, it's got the bottom, it's got a lot of components of the 2 litre Vauxhall CDTI, also Fiat, and the 1900, um, so it's a bit of a hybrid mix of both. Um, main issue it's got is this, uh, this is the EGR plug, and as you can see down there on the EGR valve, somebody's smashed the plug off, I mean I'm trying to show you an example of something which has a plug on like... I don't know, typically there'll be nothing like, like this. Obviously, you've got your plug and it goes onto a housing and the housing on the EGR valve is smashed. Luckily, this hasn't damaged. Um, so naturally, a brand new starter motor as well. So naturally, that is causing a problem for the engine management light comes on. And if you give it the full beans, it sort of like uh, goes into limp mode. I must say, I did give it the full beans as hard as I ever class has given the full beans and it was fine for me. Um, so what I'm going to try and do is i don't know I, I might be able to get some kind of cable tie or something just temporarily to keep that on there mainly because obviously since that's come off the um engine management lights on and unfortunately it's a 58 plate car if it was an 08 plate car it would be advised on the mot it's not part of the test diesels up to 08 is advised I think it's up to about the 1st of July. And of course, this being a 58, it'll be September onwards, 2008. So unfortunately, that means it's part of the test for the sake of a few months on this. So I'm going to just... I'm not going to jump... I think I can get a genuine EGR valve for £120. But I don't want to spend £120 off the bat. Um, so I'm going to try and do some bodgery on that just to get the light off for the test. Because what I would rather spend the money on is I know the water pumps are pap on these and the timing belts aren't great for going. I would rather spend that money getting the timing belt done. I ain't got time. I'm going to see one of my mates. He'll sort it. I'd rather, if I'm going to spend any money, I'd rather spend it on the timing belt. But for now, the EGR is priority to get something on that to get the light off. I think it's going to need a tyre on this. To be honest, I'm a stickler for, for things being right, but if I can just scrape that tyre through the MOT, I mean, I'm a tester, I'm going to take the gauge across it. As long as it's 1.6 or above, uh, I'm just going to pass an advice because I don't want to spend... Uh, uh, the aim of my project with this car is to keep it cheap. I have a day-to-day -day runner. I ain't going to be minting it up. I ain't going to be having it perfect. It's going to be something that the dogs can get chucked in the back, take it where I need to take it, and that's that. Like I say, I'm going to try and tidy the headlamps up. Number plates are looking a bit crap. Uh, so they, I will... I, I'm not going to change them for the test. I'll probably advise them for being a little bit... Dete then again, deteriorated, if I stand back here from a distance even when you get close up you can clearly see bf 58 sv i will just get rid of some of this browning on it in around this eight area i'm just going to get a black pen yes you can do that guys a bit of black pen and just get rid of whatever this red stuff underneath is just for the purposes of the mot and like i've said clean up the, these headlamp lenses again these don't affect the mot because the beam image generally sits about here anyway but i will clean them up and i can actually feel the grime on it i think they'll clean up quite nice um and generally just give it a wash and that's about it like i said there's something at the back rattling on and i believe it's the heat shields for the exhaust i'm sure see if you can hear it 
can't really hear it doing that but there is something same on this back number plate it looks a bit grotty i don't know what this stuff is here but i'm just going to simply just get a bit of black sharpie and just coat that bit in just so it's not too bad but again you stand from a distance you can clearly say that's it that says bf you know what i mean it's it's let's not be pathetic and mot's are to minimum standards uh, to the point of when it can't be read now that can be read it's an advisory that it's deteriorated it's not the fact that it's a fail when it's a fail it would mean something coming across here and it looks like an e it blatantly looks like an f especially when i sort that out um so yeah that's the, the back end so all right parking sensors all working i will add um but there's a few bad points like i've said up to now i think it's going to be a bad point tire some shields i don't know there's a bit of a clunk at this side might be a spring not a big deal um mainly that agr valve is an issue and like i've said the timing belt is an issue but i just want to get it tested first so i'll just take my time with it and what i have bought these being the twin turbo they take a specialist specific for this engine zero 040 and we've had some in the cupboard sat there for honestly about 10 years i don't know if oil goes out of date i doubt it but it's sat there for 10 years and it's the only car that that oil goes into don't quote us exactly on that is this engine the 1.9 ttid saab slash fiat slash gm engine uh, so yeah i'm going to use it my dad says just use it i'm sick of it sitting in the cupboard so i'm going to do an oil and filter change the only thing this does have which a lot of these have is that little oil pickup thing in the in the sump um the 19 don't suffer no one yet as bad as a two litre where there's a little o-ring that hardens up now i want to go into the garage just briefly away from the car uh, for a moment is on start up when it's been stood for days the oil pressure warning light comes on for about one or two seconds on first startup. To be honest, it does on Holly's Astra as well. Yes, I know there's a little issue with the the pickup on them, but on, on the 19s, it's rarely ever caused engine failure. It's just, you've just got to remember on startup, what I tend to do is actually turn it over and deliberately don't let it catch. And then on the second time, it's already built the oil pressure up anyway. But I just want to show you what I've actually got here for it. I've got a few bits. So, obviously an oil filter expensive parts for these uh, fiat engines i will say oil filter pollen filter and an air filter the fuel filter the guy assures me uh, that it's been changed recently so when i put it on the lift i'll find out because uh, it's quite expensive it's about 40 or 50 quid so if i don't have to spend that i won't um for now at least anyway so that's that what i'm going to do but this is this oil here i just want to show you it's in here somewhere two seconds it's sat here honestly for as long as i can remember here it is special mobile one 040 and it is specific for saabs well because this engine actually never got put in the Vauxhall, i don't believe all the gm and opal down there you see um so yeah turbo diesel so i'm gonna just stick that into it because it's a specialist oil and before you go on about bodgeries here like i've mentioned it's just a little rubber o-ring on the pickup on the sump now this mot seal here you might not be able to read it Da -da -da -da. I don't know if you can read that. I'm trying to point it out. Um, engine sealant regenerates rubber and plastic seals. That's nothing to do with oil consumption. So what I'm going to do is just bang one of these in. These are designed for cam sensor, cam seals and crankshaft seals. Um, and when they become hard, they leak. So you put that in and it softens and swells up the rubber. Not nothing dangerous. And I'm going to bang one of them in. I might even bang two in paid very little for the car because uh, i'm not dropping the sump on it i'm not going that far in depth in it like i've said it's going to be a cheap runner but like i've said it's done this for years and i remember working on a, the, the car that that oil was in for over 10 years ago when these were a lot newer and he had the problem he come into it he said the oil light just flashes up uh, for a few seconds when i start up in the morning seeing low oil pressure and it, it, what it is it, 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 um, it allows a little bit of air into the system and we changed the oil switch back then when they were new we didn't know we changed the oil switch on it nothing changed the oil nothing the only thing is with this with the oil being quite thick and old and it's more than that you can guarantee somebody has not put the 040 in so once the 040 has gone in once it's got a nice new filter and once i put that additive in to swell up this tiny little seal from leaking in the sump probably be all right and like i've said it's been like this the guy says for over six years he's owned it i know these cars that have done this for, for, for years five and six years and it doesn't it doesn't happen when you drive it only happens on the very very first start up when it's been stood for more than 12 hours so like i've said i ain't going mad with this car i'm debating gambling 
like a lot of people do and get away with it, but I never do. And uh, not bothering with the timing belt. And if it snaps, tough. But I don't know. It's still going to cost us over 200 quid. Do I want to spend 200 quid? We'll make that decision once I check it over on the lift and see what it needs for an MOT. Because like I said, the guy's buying it off. We're in a whole new world of pain now of trying to get it through an MOT. The timing belt, the oil, all this stuff is irrelevant until it's got an MOT. Because at the moment, it's just a paperweight. I can't tax it. I can't use it. It's worthless. Um, so that's where I'm standing with it. But the biggest issue I've got with this car is none of that is this. Uh, it's sort of annoying to be fair well it is annoying this is the condition of I'll just get them out swing the camera around bear with this guys looking at me ugly face right in the camera so this is the situation for the keys now this looks like it's been chewed by a dog but it does work the, 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 key, the correct key blade's in and the immobiliser is in so it does actually go in and turns the car touches the car so it works but it looks terrible this is just some kind of shell with electronics in it but it's not coded in god knows what's involved to do that and this is another one where the buttons are non-existent there's a key sticking out of it a blade and again it goes in and it does work so i have got two keys that start the car um but i can't lock it I cannot lock the car because if you press this lock button on here it just locks then unlocks if you use the blade over here I have been trying to think of some ways because if I have this door open like this and I jump in and I press the lock button it bounces them back so see it bounces them so the problem I've got is, and I'm guaranteed, let's have a try doing this. And I, like I've said, I cannot be arsed sitting locking myself in a car. So we'll press lock, put that, nah, you see, so I don't know why it's doing that. So, no. Nah. So anyways, that's a situation with the locking. And if you do it with the key, a lot of you have saying, damn, use the key. Yes, I know. But the problem is, I don't want to knack this key because he said it's very femur. It's not in very tight. No, I'm just not going to touch that. But anyways, I, we did it last night with the blade. All it does, it just locks that door. None of the rest. And then you're still knackered because the boot is a button. So even if you locked all them, this would still be live. So yeah, that, believe it or not, is going to be one of the biggest issues I've got stupidly bloody keys in Lockman but the boot is massive perfect for the dogs perfect for what I need so yeah the key situation is rather annoying I will say um, but again it's not going to be a reason for us not to buy the car if you know what I mean so yeah so that's that anyways so we'll jump in we'll have a look at the interior it's actually I've got this door locked it's actually not bad in here it just needs a clean so we shut the door four electric windows xenon headlamps like i mentioned we've got rain sensing wipers we've got cruise control we've got bluetooth and yes the bluetooth does actually work a really nice sound system uh six speed f40 please note f40 not the pap m32 chocolate box really nice gearbox in it Heated seats, and actually can't believe it, but um, the aircon works. It's actually got working aircon, which is a big plus for me. Genuinely, when you knock that off, the aircon kicks in and blows ice cold. Can't believe that one. That is perfect. But above all else, look at this. That is just a work of art. I wish I could do that in slow motion. Ready again? Wow. <laughs> It's like a karate chop. Let's do it in slow motion. There we go. Goes over, under, folds into itself. Let's see if it'll do it in slow motion. If I do it... Doesn't quite do it if you do that. But that is fantastic. Worth its money in gold just for that. There we go. <laughs> What's in here? Oh, God, guys. Lifetime. Lifetime. Look at this. 
Oh, I'm over the moon at that. Not, is it broken? No. Why would that not be just put on? Oh, that's champion. That was really letting it down on the front, colour coded. It's not even marked. There we go. We're, we're on the plus now. Pluses generally followed by minuses, so let's hope something else I don't find which is wrong. So, yeah. And there's the tone eye in there. So, there we go. There's a, an output of some kind. So, apart from, uh, obviously, there's a thing there about the back tyre. Uh, it needs pumped up the tyre pressure monitoring. So, yeah. Nice enough in here. I like it. And it hasn't been beaten up. The roof line's all right. Just needs a bit of a clean. But I'm going to be shoving dogs in it and driving it round. What do you guys think? What do you think? You know... I need to get it MOT, so that might cost us sixty or seventy pound for one tire. This one at this right hand isn't great, but that'll go through. Isn't right? I'm I'm questionable on the front left. I'll deal with that one when I look at it. Uh, might need a spring on the back, possibly. Uh, in the driver side rear tire, he says it goes flat. That's one that's triggering the thing. I might take that while like if I get a tire and just get it um, sealed if it's a valve, a rim, whatever, nail in the tire. Sort that EGR valve, the plug, if I can. I don't want to have to go along the lines of buying one. I am just going to do bodgery on that. To be honest, as an MOT tester, as long as the light can stay out long enough for an hour, 45 minutes for the MOT, that's all it needs. So I'm going to do a test even with that plug. I'm going to put the plug on because technically speaking for an MOT, if any emissions control equipment looks like it's been tampered with i.e the plug not plugged in it's a fail so clearly i'm going to put that on put a cable tie around it so it's in place wipe the cords and see if the light comes immediately back on if it comes immediately back on i'm going to have to get a new egr valve for the mot if it stays off for a little while happy days as long as it stays off for the time of test you're fine so if i can drive that car over at the test test it for an hour and it doesn't come on. Once that car's logged off, that's it. It's at the time of test. So we'll see on that one. <laughs> but between what I'm going to do now is put it on the lift. Like I said, look at the tyre. I've looked at the brakes. They look fine. Look what's going on at the back. The heat shield rattling or something. Um, sort that EGR and do a quick service. Oil, mainly the oil and filter. I'll stick an air filter in. He, he says there's been a fuel filter done. But like I said, that's expensive. If I can avoid that, I will. Um... And what was the other thing? A pollen filter, but that really is not important. And pop this on. Um, probably give it a good clean before I take it in to test because it's always good if a car looks nice than taking it in wrecked. Even if I'm testing it or not, whoever does it, it always looks nicer for um, a car to be in a presentable condition. And if I, if this isn't a total white off underneath and the subframe and everything's good, I'll probably get it valved, MOT it. I might even stick a new EGR valve on and get the pump done. Um, but this car, I don't want it to be a labour of love. I, 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 this might sound stupid to use. I want to have a car that I can just hack off. I never hack things off in that sense of the word, guys. But I just want a car. If I've got some stuff to take the tip, just hoi the seats down, throw it in. If there's a little mark on the seat that happens, or if it gets scuffed somewhere, that's what it'll be. Actually, seeing that, I think one thing that will seriously irritate the hell out of us is not being able to lock it. That will bug me. Um, so, might have to sort something with the locking situation on it um, because that is going to be rather annoying, <laughs> to say the least. So, anyways, let us know what you think. Have I made a good decision buying it? Would any of you like to buy it at some point if I decide to move it on? I will say I've drove it and it drives lovely gearbox it's got so much power i honestly after having the 2.8 v6 turbo ha -ha, you know i've had the, the big aero i thought the little 1.9 twin turbo diesel would be laughable but it's got the aero badge on i always used to say oh a 1900 diesel with an aero badge on that's a joke to sob I'm not gonna lie it absolutely flies and that's to the point where the guy says if you hoof it into the red on the yes it's got a turbo gauge guys a turbo gauge if you blast it right into the red he says it has a panic and it goes into a limp mode. That will be because the EGR valve is not connected. Because the EGR valve is meant to actually fully close um, when you're under full boost. But it's not connected. So clearly there's a light on and that's exactly why it'll be doing it. But it drives lovely. It pulls so strong. Like I mean really strong in any gear. Um, and everything works. Like I said, ice cold air con the whole lot. What more do I want? Perfect little daily. Just to park anywhere, use for anything. It's ideal. So let us know what you think. 
leave a comment below i might do a bit of video of the work i'm doing but i don't know um i want to crack on and get it done because i want to get home at a reasonable time so leave a comment let us know what you think what's your thoughts uh if you've enjoyed this video hit the like if you haven't already done so hit subscribe and you all know the crack about helping us with little bits here and there awards be projects because they all cost us a lot of money i've spent a lot of money on the tt as well uh, getting that ready you know so the buy me a coffee the link below and the super thanks it all really does help guys so much thanks for watching i'll catch you next time